And Lawrence, good afternoon. How are you? Oh, I could be better. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's say that. I could be better. Yeah. But, um, what is the know, most, it is what it is. What, what is the most frustrating thing for you, right? Everybody understands that if you're a competitor and you're an athlete, that losing hurts. There's no question. But is there another layer of this, Lawrence, in terms of losses like this that just eat at you for a day or two after a game? Well, um, as we talked before, um, it's all about trying to move on. But um, when you look at games like this, you just look at can you as a player do better? Um, and that's what I reflect on. Like, can I do better in, in any any situation on the field? Can I do better on the sideline? Can I do better on special teams? Can I do better, period? And I, and I feel like not only me, but we all should look at each other and look in the mirror and say, can we do better? Because you're right, we, we, we lost this game, but it was a game to win. So can we do better as individual players for we make sure this don't, doesn't keep continuing to happen? And can we do a self-evaluation uh, uh, on what we need to fix and how we need to do it? So, so Lawrence, does anything like just like when you're watching the game, like as a player, do, nothing bugs you about? I know obviously everyone's got to play better, but what, what bugs you about some of the mistakes that, that are made? Like I said, I feel like we we could do better as individual players, and it and we could do better overall handling certain situations. Um, there's not one thing that I, I sit on the sideline like, oh, this, this bugs me. This, they shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't, I, I'm not that type of player that blames people what they shouldn't and shouldn't do. I'm that type of player that sits there like, okay, we made a mistake on this play, but we could do better on that play. Let's let's fix that. Ignore that play. Let's move on to the next one. Because like I said, you can't live behind one bad play you have to understand you have to go into the next play and continue to play better football and not continue to make that mistake um but when you're sitting on the sideline like the frustration happens of what like i said what i could do better as a player on the field can i do a little bit more can i have a little bit more energy can I do a little bit more hustle that's what you think and you kind of do that in the rest of the game um but at, at the end of the day as we start this game and it doesn't matter who starts the game how it starts is when you start the game, you go out there and give it your all, and that's all you can hope for. I, I mean, um, and the, yeah, reason, the reason I ask you is, I'm sorry for cutting you off, because like you know, I've been on the sideline of a lot of crappy teams before I got to New England, and I remember sitting there going, "Man, we are a dumb football team," because we would constantly do stupid things that put us in terrible situations. Or I would say, "We we are a, we are such an undisciplined team," and I didn't feel like that was like a a, a knock on anybody, but a collective group. So. I guess, do you think this is a smart, disciplined football team? Yes, I, I do think it's a, it's a disciplined team. I think we have good um, leadership to understand that that's there. Um, I think we, we all hear that, that concept of do your job, right? And that's part of it, not trying to do more than what you need to be done, not trying to make a, a, a big play when it's not characteristic. And that's where it, it relies on certain things, right? So you're sitting there, you look at you look at the situations, you look at the offense go, you look at the defense go, and you see there's certain times that people try to do more than they should. And that's where big plays start happening. That's where mistakes start happening. It doesn't mean you're not disciplined. It's sometimes you, you feel the need, oh, I need to make that big play. I need to get the momentum going. And that's something that we just need to eliminate. Like We got to have trust in each other to do what we got to do. I never sit on the sideline and like, oh, man, when this is the problem, and it's not who I am as a person and as a player. Lawrence, you've been on a, a lot of different teams and a lot of different organizations. There is some worry after what we heard a little bit on the outside about J.C. Jackson and Jack Jones that maybe there could be some fracturing. As a guy who's been around the league a little bit, have you been in a fractured locker room and know what that would look like? And I ask that because you're one of the veterans that I think a lot of people would say, well, you know what? They got people like Lawrence Guy in the locker room. They'll make sure to police that kind of stuff. Have you seen it? Do you know what it looks like in case it does happen here that you can intervene? Um, I want to say I've been, I, I, yeah, let's see, I've been around a long time. Um, 13 years right now, right? So, yeah, I've seen different locker rooms. Like, I've seen different situations occur. Um, and that's something 
I don't listen. We don't let the outside noise get a part of that. But um, we understand what happens in the locker room. We understand how to talk to certain players, how to talk to talk to certain coaches, and the coaches talk to certain things. doesn't matter the age or, or, or around it. So it's just one of those things that I want to look into that situation as big as, as everybody's thinking about. Um, I think the first thing we got to do overall is just play better football as, as a whole team um, before we can have a better outcome on Sundays. Um, we're talking to Lawrence Guy and, and Lawrence, um, how does a team become a better tackling team in the middle of the season when you're not putting on a bunch of pads? How does how does that happen? No, no, we put on pads every week. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, how, you don't have you don't have fifteen you don't have sixteen weeks you don't have sixteen weeks of padded practices yeah, during a football season, just, do you? It's, it's one of those things that you just you just work on gang tackling. Um, it's just you work on it in, in practice. You put more emphasis on it. Um, that, that, that's as all I can say. You work on it in practice for more emphasis on it. Make sure you gain tackle. How you eliminate uh, missed tackles? The whole group is there to support the tackle. If one person misses it. Three people need to be there before we could support every decision, just in case that one person does miss it. Lawrence, uh, of course, you guys are headed to Germany to take on Indianapolis. In a way, will it be good to kind of get out of Dodge right now and sort of change the environment, try to change some things a little bit? Or is this more of a, uh, all right, we got to go to Germany and go play a game, so let's go do what we got to do type scenario, going all the way over there to play a game that you could have played in Gillette Stadium? Um. I think it'll be a cool experience to actually go to a different country to play a football game. Um, not a lot of people get to go out the country and, and do certain things like that. When we played in Mexico, I think it was a great experience to have to be able to go to a different country and play a game. Um, different fans, different environment. It's pretty awesome that we're able to do that. Um, like I said, like we we can't forget sometimes that you know a couple of games don't defy us. Of at the team of what we are, um, the losses of them or the wins of them, um, what defines us, uh, who we are as as a team, is what we continue to go out there every Sunday and playing our hearts out. And I think we we all really keep that in mind. It's like, yeah, the outcome might not be what we want, but you, you see a whole bunch of men out there playing their hearts out for each other. Um, you can you can see that on the thing. The outcome might not be it. Some mistakes might be made, but you can still see that we're still trying to play the game. We're not just giving up and throwing in the towel and throwing anybody in there. But trying to compete still. Okay, so Lawrence, I have the most random, weird question for you. Okay, and I figured you would be the guy to answer this for me because I just saw this story. It has nothing to do with football at all. You may appreciate this one a little bit more than the other questions. So I saw there was like there's like these uh, killer whales have been attacking these yachts and boats uh, in s- different countries, and uh, they disable the boat, and then they end up someone ends up getting killed. I'm curious, like if you're on a boat and you realize there's a pot of killer whales, do you just throw somebody overboard and say, here you go, like take it and then try and get away? Or do you literally try to outmaneuver them? Like what would be your what would be, what would be your default setting? I'm curious to make sure the like you, you sacrifice one for the group. Would that be a, a significant like answer? I, don't know, I told you it was random. Bunch of killer whales attacking your boat, Lawrence. Like you just you just sacrifice one person to throw them overboard, right? <laughs> so what type of boat were we in? Are we in a in a, in a, in a, a speedboat? No, no, it, it was like it was like a yacht, like a sailing yacht, but not a huge. It was just big enough where this pod of killer whales, was, call it six killer whales, are attacking this boat, and they're obviously, you know, they don't want a seal, they want a human. So I would just say just throw somebody overboard and then everybody else can live. No, nah, we gotta try to uh, uh, try to avoid them. Try to go as fast as we can. Then if that don't work, man, you know that paper rock scissors thing's gonna be real. You better be great at that. <laughs> right? The losers gotta go. Yeah, I would say that's what I would think. The only way for you to survive. Uh, let me let me let me try to narrow it in a little bit because the one thing I have learned about Lawrence and talking to him the past couple of years is that uh, he is a movie guy. He yeah. will binge watch TV. Free Willy. Stuff. Yeah. So um, uh, so Lawrence, what will you have queued up on the oh, long yeah. flight to Germany? I'm going to sleep. Like, look the time difference. I'm going straight to sleep because I always so I just been watching bodies on Netflix, right? Elite show. Like, 
Wait, what's it watch, called? You gotta watch it. Bodies. Bodies on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna. Really I'm gonna. Good. I'll, I'll put my wife on that. She does all the TV watching and then sort of reports back to me. But I also have learned this about Lawrence Guy too. And Fourier, as a father of seven, you can appreciate this. When you get done with the game, you come home and the kids are all over you. And I know that Lawrence does value his sleep and has said, "Hey." The little kids are running all over me, so he gets to get into a comfortable plane seat. And what is it? About eight hours to Germany from Providence or Boston or whatever. So you'll have a you'll it'll probably be a uh, uh, an uninterrupted time for you to catch some shut eye. So I can't understand where Lawrence is going with this. A hundred percent. That one. I'm gonna get some sleep on that. But like when the kids go to the game, uh, like yesterday, uh, my kids came to the game. It was amazing. We spent. After the thing, we, we spent time there. Then I got home. Uh, me and my daughter read a book together. She read me a book. I talked to them and I thanked them for coming to the game because um, that's an experience that they have, as an experience I have that they get to watch me play. Um, but from there, I'd be like, it's 7.30. It's time for y'all to go to bed. Then my oldest doesn't understand that it's daylight savings. So she's up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, hey, we gain an hour. Go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to wait till my five. Go back to bed. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, the sun is not up. It's so dark. I understand. Go back to bed. Um, thank you for waking me up. Go back to bed. Um, then we're like, I dropped my score. I'm like, I got to go to work. Because when we go to the hotel, I'm like, hey, I got to go, guys. It'd be like 6 o'clock. <laughs> it's like, are you sure? I said, yeah, I got to go. I'm in my room by, by 8.39, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking that time to myself. Man, there you go. The life of an NFLer and a dad all at the same time. Joining us now on the Harbor One Hotline, our guy Lawrence Guy. Have a uh, fun trip over in Germany. Hopefully you end up uh, getting a W, and uh, we will uh, we'll talk to you when we talk to you because I know the schedule is going to get uh, uh, overturned uh, the next couple of days. But uh, thank you, Lawrence. We appreciate it. Oh, nothing to it. Thanks for having me.